receiver cornerback. Spencer Jankowski, number 16, quarterback and corner. Nathan Fleming, number 22, tight end, linebacker. schools would like to thank the Boardman Boosters Club for their hard work and donations to help build Spartan Stadium. If you would like to support the Boosters Club, you can go to www.boardmanboosters.org. 
There you can choose if you want to be on the booster level, spirit level, or spartan level. The Boardman Booster's goal is to continue the support of Boardman and raise the bar for our athletics. The Boardman School's Fund for Educational Excellence would like to congratulate its teacher grant winners for 2020. Thanks to the generous support of the Boardman community and the Boardman Education Association, they have received close to $10,000 for classroom projects that go beyond the scope of existing budgets. This is a tradition that began in 2009 and hopes to continue for years to come. BSFEE has also helped students learn remotely during this pandemic by donating $5,000 to the Boardman Schools for 20 Wi-Fi hotspots. To support the BSFEE or learn more about their annual reverse raffle, please find them on Facebook or visit their website at Boardman Schools Fund dot com. Never been safe, but I never come closer. Another year down and another year older. Hi, this is Bruce Flack, president of the Boardman Booster Club. Hi, I'm Tim Saxton. I'm very proud to be the superintendent of the Borman Local Schools. You know, in the past, the Ohio High School Athletic Association has had a motto, respect the game. I think this year, we got to respect the guidelines. So while you're here today to, uh, to watch a, a wonderful event, uh, we ask that you respect the new rules in place. Because remember, this is about kids. We want our athletes to be able to play. We want our band to be able to march. We want our cheerleaders to be able to cheer. And we have a fantastic TV crews working behind the scenes that makes everything just look so good. So remember, respect the guidelines. This is all about the kids. Welcome to beautiful Spartan Stadium. My name is Cindy Fernback, and I'm the principal here at Portman High School. We hope you enjoy this year's season of football and amazing marching band. Go Spartans. Good evening. I'm Mark Pitts with the Fire Chief for Boardman Township Fire Department. Hi, Spartan fans. I'm Chief of Police Todd Worth. Hi, I'm Bernie Kosar, former NFL quarterback and proud 1982 graduate of Boardman High School. Good evening, Spartan Nation, and welcome to Spartan Stadium. I'm head football coach Joe Ignacio, and this is the house where our honor will always be defended, and we will fight to the end for Boardman High. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Spartan Stadium. We are so proud of this beautiful facility we have here. We wish both teams the best of luck, and as always, go Spartans. Good evening, Spartan family. I'm Katie Fallow, Director of Student Services, and I want to thank you for being here tonight to cheer on our Spartan athletes, cheerleaders, and musicians. Times are uncertain, but the strength and resolve of Spartan Nation remains steadfast. Let's go, Maroon and White. The following items are not permitted within the stadium. Outside food, drinks, and umbrellas. Please use a poncho. Also, noisemakers, cowbells, air horns, and special lights. To help with our safety first efforts, we do not permit re-entry. Please keep aisleways clear and no standing along railings. Alcohol and smoking of any kind is strictly prohibited on stadium and school grounds. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your night at Spartan Stadium. Hello Spartan fans, welcome to the 103rd year of Boardman Schools. I am Vicki Davis and I'm here with my fellow board members, John Landers, Jeff Barone, John Frida, and Frank Zetz. We'd like to wish all our Spartan athletes a healthy and successful season. Go, Go Spartans! Hi, I'm Jared Cardillo, Director of Instruction for the Boardman Local Schools. We believe together we can transform lives through academics, athletics, and the arts. Tonight, you'll see it all come together as our football team takes the field, our band marches at half, and our very own BSTN students behind the scenes bring you all the action on the big board. You can see the amazing work that's being done here at Spartan Stadium. We're now in the final phase, and we couldn't have done this without the support of our generous donors. I'd 
like to welcome you Spartan fans to the Foreman Spartan Stadium for the 2020 football season. So happy to be here. Let's make this one of the greatest years we've ever had. Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to Spartan Stadium. I'm Jeff Hammerton, Assistant Athletic Director, and for us to enjoy tonight's game, we have some rules we need you to follow. As you can see, our stadium has been X'd out. We are gonna use the phrase X marks the spot this season as where to sit. These are in pods. We have pods of four in the reserve section and pods of three in the general admission. If your tickets are in the reserve and you are sitting in the pods of four, please maintain that section the whole entire time. If you are in the general admission in the pods of three, we ask you to keep with your loved one or family members there. Second thing, we ask you to wear a mask. Any mask will do. I have the blue mask here that I can put on. Keep this on the entire game. If you have a fancy mask or a nice one that you would like to wear, you can wear that one as well. And finally, these are not our rules. These are the governor's rules. If we are to have a season, and this is about the kids, we have to do our part as fans to make that happen. Please ensure that we are doing our part to make our seniors, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen have a great fall season in the 20 of 20. Thank you very much, and we hope you have a great time tonight at Spartan Stadium. It's time to meet your 2020-2021 senior cheerleaders. Haley Beach. Gianna Chetsko. Lanny Kilpatrick. Tara Pasvanis. Serena Ramahi. Cheer is important because it brings so many girls of different backgrounds and personalities together. us the opportunity to volunteer in our community and represent our school. I'd say cheer is important because it forms such long-lasting friendships between the fans, the community, and the players. Cheer is important because we get to carry on the pride and traditions of Borman High School. Cheer is important because I get to be a positive role model for all the students and the people in the community. Hi, I'm Chris Clonus, director of the BSTN program here at Borman High School. If you're with us tonight at Spartan Stadium, welcome. If you're streaming from home, thanks for tuning in. Everything you see here tonight is going to be directed and produced by the students at Borman High School from freshmen to seniors. Let's check in with them and see what exactly it is that they do to bring you all of your Friday night entertainment. Hi, my name is Sam Holter. This is my fourth year on the production crew, and I'm the technical director, which means I control the jumbotron, everything that goes on the live stream, and all the cameras that are behind all of it. I control everything right here from this control surface, where I can see everyone's feed and everything down below, and it's a lot of fun. Hi, my name is Lucas Beers, and I'm the director of the instant replays that you see on the jumbotron and the live stream. I'm Antonio Jacobson, and I get your wide shots throughout the game, and I also record the halftime show by your Borman Spartan Marching Band. 
Hi, I'm Austin Yurkovic. I do the graphics for the Jumbotron, and I'm also in charge of the marketing to make sure sponsors get their ads queued on time. Hi, my name is Adam Crawford, and I run the scoreboard graphics for the live stream. I'm Adam Richards. I'm a wireless camera operator. I focus on the crowd shots and the band shots. I'm Carter Kaler, and I'm a wireless camera operator, and you will find me down on the field. Hi, I'm Guy Tepsik, and I do the play-by-play -play commentary for the football games. I'm Santino Ancelilli, and I do color commentary. And we look forward to having you join us this season. I'm Richard Booth. I'm a camera operator. I focus on mainly full 22 shots. I'm Liam Manley. I'm also a camera operator. I focus more on tracking and close-up shots. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Board of Education and Administration of Portland High School, we would like to welcome you to beautiful Spartan Stadium for tonight's contest, featuring our guests, East High School, and the home team, Portland High School. In order to make today's contest as enjoyable as possible, please represent your school and community in a positive and respectful manner. That means follow the rules, speak and act responsibly, show courtesy, respect for your fellow fans, officials, and coaches. Also, make sure you're showing respect to the administrators and authority figures, and of course, your team opponents. Let me today say a great one by remembering to respect the game. Thank you. The officials assigned to this contest have been selected according to the procedures adopted by the Ohio High School Athletic Association. The officials for tonight's game are referee Anthony Montana, umpire Eric Moreno, the linesman Joe Batura. The line judge, Pat Montana. And you back, Judge Bob Marino. And now let's welcome our captains for tonight's contest. For the visiting team, East, number 68, Knowledge Matlock. And for our Spartans, number 25, Marco Stiliano. Number 64, Jay Powell. And number 68, Anthony Mika.
and gentlemen, we proudly present the 2020 edition of your very own Boardman Spartan Marching Band. Please stand and join the band and vocalist Julia DeSista and Miranda Russell in the playing and singing of the Boardman High School alma mater. Stadium. Tonight will be senior night for our football players and cheerleaders. In a season quite different than most others, we decided to bring some normalcy to our student athletes by recognizing our seniors to start the year this year. We will begin with our football players and then move to our cheerleaders. Let's recognize and celebrate our seniors in the class of 2021. Helping recognize these athletes will be Superintendent Tim Saxon, board member Vicki Davis, High School Principal Cindy Fernback, Assistant Principal Kyle Sheehan, and Athletic Director Marco Manarucci. Yazin Abarak, escorted by Maha Abarak and Mike Abarak. Makai Alameen, 
escorted by Nicole Dalforia. Richie Evans, escorted by Karen Evans and Richard Evans Sr. Nathan Fleming, escorted by Ron and Dawn Fleming. Jared Fullerman, escorted by Frank and Christine Fullerman. Ryan Henry, escorted by Daniel and Amy Henry. Luke Huzika, escorted by Monica Huzika and Jeff Huzika. James Jamma, escorted by Josephine Jamma. Spencer Jankowski, escorted by Steve and Dana Jankowski. Jaheen Johnson, escorted by Jamil Murphy and Jody Johnson. Anthony Miko, escorted by Keith and Renee Miko. Rami Musa, escorted by Hany and Summer Musa. Jake Powell, escorted by Kevin and Kathy Powell. Marco Stillian, escorted by Tony and Lisa Stillian. Gary Walker, escorted by Gary Walker Sr. and Anita Bangle. Nick Winson, escorted by George and Melinda Winson. Ladies and gentlemen, your seniors, class of 2021 football team. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We have some rules that we would like to follow this evening. Number one, we ask that masks are worn at all times. Number two, that you stay seated on the X and stay in your pods. We also will have concessions as vendors go around the stadium that will not be in concession stand. And we ask that each fans stay on the visiting section and the home stands are reserved for Mormon fans. Thank you. like the last starting lineups for this evening. For East, number 25, James Brooks. Number 54, Sean Kane. Number 50, Anthony Howard. Number three, Cornell Kennedy. Number 68, Knowledge Matlock. Number 16, Vincent Steele. Number 11, Ruben Tally. Number 10, Anthony West. Number two, Cameron Atwood. Number 19, Luther Bell. Number five, Tim Davis. Number 24, Frank Harris. Number 52, Dwayne Irby. Number 77, Delonte Kalaski. Number nine, Jay Smith. And number 12, Deron Lover. For the Spartans, offensively, they will start at one wide receiver, number one, Anthony Hightower. At another receiver, number three, Cam Thompson. Number nine, Stephen Contact will be a third wide receiver. Fullback will be number 25, Marco Stillana. On the line will be tackles, number 72, Nick Winson. And number 54, Joe Sapera. At guard will be number 68, Anthony Nico. And number 52, Portland Love. Your center this evening will be number 63, Aiden Miller. The backfield will be number four, quarterback Terrence Thomas. Running back number six, Sean Mahora. And our tight end will be 19, Luke Kuzika. Defensively, on the line, the Spartans will have an end. It's number 64, Jay Powell. And number 38, Gary Walker. Tackles will be number 72, Nick Winson. And number 68, Anthony Nico. Your linebackers will be number 23, Richie Evans. And number 30, Glenn Strines. Defensive backs will be number 25, Marco Stillian. Number one, Anthony Hightower. Number nine, Stephen Contact. Number six, Sean Ohoro. And number four, Terrence Thomas. Handling the kicking duties tonight for this part will be number 29, Carson Essen. Our long snapper will be number 39, Jared Maher. And holding on extra points and kicks will be number 25, Marco Stillian.
gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Though wise men at their end know dark is right, because their words had forked no lightning, they do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Tonight, the Boorman Spartans face off against the Youngstown East Golden Bears.
now I ask you to remain standing and remove your hats for the playing and singing of our national anthem. Imagine a carefree retirement where the only worry you have is what Corbin High School football games you're going to be able to attend this season. If you are looking for a simplified, one-on-one, -on -one, clear view approach to preparing for retirement, then Media Financial is the only game in town. Come visit Media Financial Services to let us help you live your dream. Thank you to our pre-game sponsor, Media Financial Services. to start the game, kicking off number six, DJ Lowen, back deep for the Spartans, number four, Terrence Thomas, and number one, Anthony Hightower. Run up to the middle, up to the right side, down and up 40. That gain of two yards. 
Gain of two yards on that play. Single from the sideline. Showing 83 wide outs that two men on the backfield. Thomas fakes the handoff, throws it over the middle, complete. That's to number three, Cam Thompson. That is a great throw for a new quarterback in Terrence Thomas to get him started and build the confidence for him to keep going throughout the game. And uh, that's a great game to start a drive as well. Um, apologies, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, there was a technical issue. I'm Guy Tepsik here with my co commentator, Michael Horo. And uh, get them inside the 30 and in great position to to produce a score here. Man motion. Thomas seemed like a bit of a botch snap there. Had to take it and jump on the ball there. You know, that's really good to see out of Thomas, though, the maturity. Um, some guys would try and create something and then maybe something worse could happen. Just going down and, and Season other days important and maturity wise as well. Thomas getting signals from the sideline here. One man behind him, that's Sean O'Horo. Horo takes the handoff up the middle, gets stuffed at about the 32. Second down or third down and uh, 14, no gain on the play, with nine minutes and 35 seconds left on the clock. That's something we're really gonna hope to see this week is some more holes opening up uh, from the offensive line, just getting off the ball a little bit faster and lower. Um, I think if we can have that, we'll have a lot more success in our run game. Thomas takes it, looking, fires to the left side. That's o He's open, into the end zone, touchdown. That was number 19, Luke Huzika on the reception there. What a great read by Th Thomas there. Really young quarterback, but you can see his maturity growing every single week. Um, staying poised in the pocket there and going to his second and third option and finding a wide open Huzika down by the left pylon. Just a great play call and a great great execution by the players, especially Thomas there. That touchdown was that Spartan touchdown was brought to you by Boating Perry. Boating Perry, a certified public accounting firm headquartered in Canfield, Ohio, with other offices in Ohio and Florida, provides the highest quality accounting, tax, audit, and business advisory services to our clients. Our top notch team provides expertise in all aspects of financial management. That extra point was good. You know, just rewatching that replay, just the calmness that, that Thomas showed there in the pocket, um, just is something you see out of a more veteran quarterback at the high school level and not getting happy feet, some people call it, where you feel like you need to run. Um, and just really seeing downfield, um, which is kind of hard for a newer quarterback. So it's great play by him, and you can see the experience uh, just out of one week growing for him. So far after that first drive, it just seems like the pass is going to open up a lot more than the run so far. Um, and I think if we keep throwing the ball, we'll actually open up the run game a little bit. So we're in for an interesting show for the Boardman offense. Spartan kicking team coming out. Number 29, Carson Essid will be kicking off. Uh, number 11, Ruben Talley on back to receive. That's it. 
kicks the ball off. Be feeling about the 12. Takes it, goes around the left side, trying to find some space, goes towards the sideline, and he is brought out at about the 34-yard line. Barton's doing a nice job keeping him back there, and they will be brought out at the 34-yard line. This week I really hope to see Boardman cover the pass a little bit better than last week um, and just really kind of hone in on, on what their ability is defensively. Uh, you, you see a lot more of five defensive backs, like sets, out of the defense this year, and hopefully that will help um, pr protect against the pass. First and ten. East at their own 34-yard line. Eight minutes and 59 seconds left to play in the first quarter. East getting signals from the sideline here. Uh, need to get the football there. Showing a two wide set, two men in the backfield. Dumps it off, running around the left side, forcing his layup down at about the 38, 39 yard line. Gain of about four yards there. It's a great game by the East offense on a first down. It might not seem like a lot, but if you can average four yards of play, then you're just going to keep getting first downs and eventually score. So defensively, we really need to work on kind of stopping them from. Getting past the line of scrimmage, you get a lot of knockbacks. Second and six, ball at the 38. Eight minutes and 25 seconds, clock is ticking. Hands it off. Botched handoff, fumble. Waiting to see who got it. Borman signals they got it. Rough single that Borman recovered the ball. Great play by the defensive lineman there for Boardman. The whole D-line really just keeping their eyes open and looking for the ball and, and not quitting. You see a scramble on the ground between East and a Boardman player and, and just a no-quit attitude from Boardman really helped them to, to get the ball into the, to back to their offense. Damn, the replay there. So out comes the Spartan offense back onto the field. Starting at the East 36, first and 10. You know, just looking at this right now, you see Cam Thompson, a great athlete, one on one here to the wide side of the field, might want to go there. Man in motion. Thomas drops back, looking, fires over the middle, incomplete. Even though that was an incomplete pass. He he's throwing the ball and spinning it really well. Spinning it mean throwing really good spirals. And again, I, I can't get over the progress he's made in one week uh, becoming a quarterback. Um, just he, he looks a lot more poised and actually looks like a quarterback this week. So it's really good to see. That pass was intended for number one, Anthony Hightower, under double coverage there. Thomas with a horrible beside him, a horrible motion. Thomas takes it, runs up the middle, and gets stuffed. Looks like there may be a loss of a yard there on that play. Wrapped, wrapped up by number 25, James Brooks. You know, good thought there. Got the receivers way out wide and then motioning the running back out, hopefully moving a linebacker out of the box, but just didn't go well up front. Sparn showing a four wide set. Three to left, one to the right. Four oh in the backfield. Thomas takes it, drops back, looking, fires, almost intercepted there. That was number five, Tim Davis, with the near interception there. And that will bring up fourth down. Great play defensively there by East. 
the safety came down really fast and downhill at the ball, creating a good breakup. Um, you just hope to see that Thomas doesn't keep his sights on one guy and tries to distribute the ball well. Um, I don't think he's going to that problem yet, but just look for that maybe going further into the game. Swines will send out their punting unit. Back to receive for is num for East is number eleven Ruben Tally. Sorens take their first timeout of the half, and we will be back after the timeout. Back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorens sent out their punting unit. Back to receive is Ruben Tally. Esid kicks it away. And I'll go out of bounds at about the 12 yard line. And that again, talking about the field position, keeping a team inside the 20 really limits the playbook of what they can do. Because an offense does not want to risk throwing the ball, maybe getting a safety or getting pinned inside the five. So even though it doesn't seem like a big play, that's actually really big in terms of field position and limiting the team's playbook, uh, which will also help the Boardman defense in simplifying what they have to do. First and 10, East at their own 20 yard line. Seven minutes and 13 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Ruben Talley at quarterback. He showing a two out set, two men. Fakes the handoff, runs around the left side, evades tacklers, and he gets wrapped up at about the 17 yard line. That was number, I believe that was number 64, Jake Powell on the tackle there. Great play there by Jake Powell, who's also one of the main leaders of the defense, uh, keeping contain and, and not letting Ruben outside. Um, he, Ruben is a compared to a Terrence Thomas on our side where it's kind of a do-it-all type of player. He can play receiver, running back, quarterback, as long as defensive and uh, a returner. Now bring up second down and 12, ball at the 18 yard line. Six minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Clock is ticking. Valley takes it, hands it off, running around the left side. Sparns wrap him up. I don't believe there was a gain on that play. That was number 24, Frank Harris on the carry there. Another great job by the Boardman defense keeping the runner from east inside the box, Sean O'Hara, the outside linebacker, making it really tough for the scrimmage. Uh, you love to see it, gets him in a great position on third down, the east offense pinned against their own end zone. Uh, so, probably looking to pass here, but at the same time, have to be careful. Good position here for the Spartans, third and 13, ball at east on 17 yard line. Flag on the play there. Waiting for the call from the official. Looks like it was a false start. So now East is in an interesting position. You don't want to risk a big play in a turnover, but at the same time, you want to get the first down. So looking for maybe a run here just to play it safe and punt the ball and get it out from their own end zone. That penalty will knock him back five yards, third and 18. Valley takes it, dumps it off to the left side. 
running up the sideline. The base tacklers goes back, running around the right side, looking for some space along the sideline there. And he is brought out of bounds at about the 35. Amazing athleticism there by him, but a few flags on the play. It looks like it might be coming back. But great effort, um, knowing the down and distance. Sometimes, you know, you might not want your player to do that that close to the end zone, but at the same time, it paid off um, until we hear the call. But uh, just look for that kid to make a few more plays tonight because, I mean, amazing athleticism and speed by him, along with grit, knowing the situation. Penalty will be on East for a line side block. That will send him back at third and 20. Five minutes and 15 seconds left to play in the first quarter. East showing four wide out set, one man in the backfield. Now he takes it, hands it off up the middle. Brant runs into the Spartan defender there, but he's short of the first down. The last two plays really showed what I think is going to be a determining factor in tonight's game for both sides of the ball, but discipline, I think, will be big in limiting penalties. Um, and even discipline outside of penalties and just doing your job um, and having miscues. So tonight, if I think that continues, it's going to be East downfall. But if they can limit that and kind of um, stop it right now, then they have the athletes to have a very interesting ball game. That last play will bring up fourth and four. So they're to send out their punting unit, and Terrence Thomas is back to receive. Flag on the play. Or flag on the play. up and away it's short lands at about the 36 37 yard line so I think that series of events illustrates what could be a huge downfall for East um, one the undisciplined on the penalties and then not capitalizing on a punt and having mental miscues like that so if they just need to limit those. If Thank they you to our program. following because, major sponsors. Uh, now this Associated School Employees Credit Union, the ball, Boardman um, Subaru. East side of the 50, which normally will lead to touchdowns or at least a field goal. So I'm sent out their offense. Starting first and 10, ball at the 35. Three minutes and 57 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Thomas takes it, throws it left side, incomplete. That pass intended for number 14, K1 Robinson. Bring up second down and 10. It's an extremely tough throw for a newer quarterback, uh, sprinting out into the boundary and then also to his non-dominant hand, which is going to make him sometimes have to throw across his body, creating an inaccurate pass. Not too far off the mark, but sometimes that can be the difference between a completion and a first down versus what just happened now. Thomas takes it. He'll take it and run around the right side. Excellent blocking. He's going to go. Wrapped up. Brought out, dragged out of bounds at about the six yard line. And once again, that elite athleticism here shown of just him getting it outside, making one cut, and, and just getting north and south, getting him all the way into the five-yard line. Um, great job offensively up front, too. The O-line did a great job getting on their blocks and doing the job along with the receivers, and then just letting an athlete be an athlete and get outside. 
first and goal. Ball at the five-yard line. Thomas hand, takes it, hands it off to Sean O'Hara, runs up the middle. Howie on the play. Tackled by number six, Dewan Walker. Face mask on East. And I hate to keep repeating myself, but once again, just the penalty. Um, those hidden yards along with like special teams and kicking and punting, like those add up to really hurt a team. Nathaniel will bring the Spartans to the two-yard line. First and goal. Thomas with a little whirl behind him. Fakes the handoff, but it gets wrapped up. Great play by the East up front there. Really swarming the quarterback in. It looks like a, a read where you read the defensive end, and if he crashes into the quarterback, you give it to the running back. But you had about three or four defensive linemen that huddled up both of them and really gave them nowhere to go. Sparn showing a four wide out set with a hole in the backfield. Man motion. Watched handoff, fumble, he recovers it. Going for the end zone, did he get there? So this brings us to an interesting situation. Last week against Austin Town Fitch, Boardman did this type of uh, jet sweep where you toss the ball up instead of handing it off, which can be considered a pass. Uh, last week it was considered a fumble, um, which again it looks like the crew, the referee crew is called this week. Um, I'd have to see the replay see if it was intended to be a, a toss forward, but if it is, that should be considered an incomplete pass. Looks like the refs rolled that way, and that'll bring up third and goal, ball at the five-yard line. Thomas takes it, rolls out to the left side, looking for an open man, dumps it off, touchdown. Great play by the Bowling offense there. The poised by Thomas to not get frantic and just slow down and find a receiver and knowing where the line of scrimmage was. Uh, just great football IQ there by uh, Thomas. That pass was caught by number 14, K1 Robinson. Spartans will send out their field goal unit. Carson has to kick him. Also an amazing catch by the wide receiver there. Extra point is good. You see him just slow down there. They know exactly where the line of scrimmage was. And then just an amazing catch laying out and, and giving great effort to make sure that he caught it in bounds and in the end zone. That touchdown was brought to you by Boating Perry. I'll bring the score to 14 nothing Spartans leading. Two minutes and 31 seconds left to play in the first quarter. This is a very important drive for East here to not lose a morale. Uh, stay positive and really try and produce something here and I think it all starts with just one first down at a time and not trying to think about the big play just really trying to put together a good drive here even if it doesn't result in points uh, it would give them a little bit of hope to see that they do have the ability to move the ball in the, the Spartan defense which is playing really well tonight Spartan sent out their kicking team that's it, back to kick. Frank Harris, number 24, back to receive. Kick is up and away. Field at about the 11. Takes it, runs around the left side, looking for an opening. Being pursued towards the sideline. Keeps running. And he may have been out earlier, but it looks like he was brought down about the 44-yard line. That's exactly what East needed there to give them a spark. 
uh, for their team and really give, give up some belief and momentum to their side. Uh, again, they flipped the field and now they have about 43 yards to go to, to pay dirt and hopefully they can uh, get something going here. center takes it hands it off to Harris Harris running around the right side brought down about the 38 well, it's interesting what they're gonna do here with Ruben Talley uh, he's one of those guys like a Lynn Bowden that can really play every position. So look for him to be at places other than quarterback now that they need to get something going. Like you see him running out to wide receiver now. Uh, let's see what they're going to try and do with him. Number 19, Luther Bell in at quarterback. Hands it off around the left side. Gets past the line. He's going at the, to the 10, 5, touchdown East. Penalty on the play. This might be coming back. So again, Ruben Talley there making a key block to spring that play. Um, but you just hate to see the undiscipline with some taunting there before he went in. Um, they can, they, those type of things add up to really hurt a team. And it looked like it was before the touchdown, so we'll see what the call is. Looks like that'll be an unsportsmanlike penalty against East, but the touchdown still counts. That'll bring, pending the extra point, that'll bring the score to 14-7, Spartans leading. Now penalty aside, what a fantastic play there for East. Um, all the way around, all 11 guys in sync as one unit. The blocking scheme was perfect up front. Um, quarterback getting the ball to the running back, running back getting to his landmark outside, and then Ruben Talley just making a key block on the corner to really spring that play outside for a, a big pickup for a touchdown. Extra point is up, and it is good. That'll bring the score to 14-7. Borman Spartans leading with a minute and 25 seconds left to play in the first quarter. So last drive for Boardman, they put together an eight play drive for 38 yards. Um, I think that's key, having a lot of plays will wear down East. As you can look, they have a lot of guys playing both sides of the ball. So that, that can wear down a team like that. Along with having eight plays and, and only half a field, shows the, the consistency Boardman is playing offensively. Um, so if they can have another big drive with a lot of plays, I think it will really tire out East. Um, now they just have to respond well to, to the momentum that East has gained from a, a big play there. But i um, very impressed by how East responded to that um, and not letting themselves get down after going down two scores. So it looks like we're in for a great game here. East will send out the kickoff team. Back to receive is number four, Terrence Thompson, uh, Terrence Thomas. And again, that field position game that they're playing, that penalty did not help, along with them not having a great kickoff team. Uh, another opportunity to get on the east side of the 50 and, and have a great opportunity to score.
kick is up and away. Lands at about the 34. Cam Thompson fields it, gets it, and he's brought down about the 20 yard line. It's not great communication there by Boardman. Um, it looked like the two, two of the receiving team members for Boardman just not having great communication on who's going to get it. So, and that hurt him. They had a great opportunity there to get the ball on uh, the plus 50, but um, they kind of shot themselves in the foot, and, and now, they're, now they have the whole length of the field to go. Now comes the score on offense. Thomas and Shotgun hands it off up the middle. Brought down at the 30s, about the 37 yard line. That was number 26, Fernando Ortiz on the carry there. I'll pick up the scoring first down. First and 10, ball at the 38. A minute and seven seconds left in the first quarter. Clock is ticking. Thomas takes it, quick pass to the left. Brought down at the 40, two yard gain there. Caught by number three, Cam Thompson. Borman is distributing the ball really well tonight. Something that I think they need to get better on from last week and they're doing so, so far. Barn showing a four wide set. Three to the right, one to the left. And penalty, that'll be on East. And that's becoming one of the themes tonight for East is just being undisciplined. And it's really hurting them throughout the whole entire game so far. It's only the first quarter. Um, so they really need to, after this quarter, kind of focus and, and try and limit those penalties and cut down on them. I'll give them an automatic first down. First and 10, ball at the 45. Thomas takes it, fakes the handoff, avoids tacklers running around the left side, makes something of it, and he is down at about the 43-yard line. Great run by Terrence there. Thomas just made an amazing read. It was kind of muddled, and he knows his athleticism. He pulled the ball and then, uh, again, cut it north and south, then dance around, and, and got a huge first down to continue a, a good drive for them. And that looks like that'll be the last play of the first quarter. Your score, Spartans 14, East 7. We will be back at the beginning of the second quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, left off. Sparm ball, first and ten, ball at the 45. Thomas takes it, hands it off to Ortiz. Ortiz gains about four or five yards on that run. We have second down and six. Ortiz is a, a young running back, but by looking at him, he looks pretty big and, and filled out. So we don't really know that he's that young by looking at it, uh, but a sophomore in the game here now. Penalty before the snap. Looks like it's on Boardman. And 
that's just not good for a drive. They're in a great position where in a second and six where uh, you're in a great position to convert for another first down, but now stuck in a, a long second and 11. That'll bring up second and 11, ball at the 46. Thomas takes it, throws it to Ortiz. Ortiz drops it. That would be incomplete. And now because of that penalty, we're stuck in a situation where Boardman is behind the chains and 11 yards to go versus a third and manageable six. So look for a pass here uh, out of the Boardman offense. Maybe into the boundary to, to the number three receiver in the boundary. Run showing full layout set to the left, to the right. Thomas takes it, drops back, throws it, ball is batted into the air, but drops incomplete. Dangerous pass there, and I'll bring up fourth down. East defense played their drive really well. They let up a few big plays, but at the end they they bend they bent, but they did not break. Um, and that, that I think that will lead to some successes for them tonight, like that last drive that they had. Uh, so now they're in a good position to tie up this ball game if they get a good return here. Kicking away is Carson Essen. Ball goes back, and it's just looks like it landed. Just out of bounds at about the tw at the eight yard line. That is a fantastic punt for a newer football player. Um, like he's he really good ball control when he's playing the ball so far this drive. He's pinned them inside the 15 on one drive and now inside the 10. So the East offense has really been playing against their own backs a, a few times this game so far, and that's helped the uh, Spartan defense a lot, limiting them in big plays. Uh, which has also helped them keep East score down to only one, one touchdown. So it'll, it'll be East ball at their own eight yard line, first and 10, 10 minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the second quarter. Penalty before the snap. Both teams pointing to each other there. really be interested to see the amount of penalty yards that East has racked up this far into the game. Barely into the second quarter, and it seems like they might have more penalty yards than actually total offense. That'll be a delay of game on East. That'll bring them back to their own four-yard line, first and 14. Hands it off from the right side, gets stuck right about the one yard line. Penalty on the play. East not having a lot of success tonight running the ball. They are uh, seven rushes for only 42 yards, um, as opposed to Boardman's uh, nine carries for 68. That'll be a chop block against the. Golden Bears. Just another penalty for this East offense, and they're just not helping themselves tonight. Along with having to play the Borman defense, it seems like they're playing themselves and really hurting themselves more than helping them. So hopefully they can clean this up and start to put together some drives, but as of right now, it's really hurting this drive along with the rest of the game. I'll bring up second down and 16 at their own two yard line. East comes out from the huddle. East takes it. Tries to run around the left side, goes back, brought down, gained of maybe a yard on that play. Now East is in an interesting spot now. Their backs are against the wall, but you can tell that they really want to produce something. They still have zero passing yards. 
First timeout of the half, and we will be back after the timeout. Uh, brought to you by CTW Development Corp. Kensington Golf, Pro Golf Club and Grill is open to the public and offers 18 holes of championship golf and a full menu bar and grill. Located next to the Courtyard Marriott in Canfield, Kensington Grill is open year-round, serving as the perfect game day spot or place to take your family for a delicious meal. Take the field here, third down and 14. Hands it off around the left side. Foreman defense had him wrapped up. Looks like he refs blew the whistle there. And that'll bring up fourth down. Nice defensive effort by the Spartans on that drive. Fourth down and 14. Frustrating play there for East just because they felt like they had something and they felt like the whistle was early, but at the same time, this forward progress was stopped for long enough that uh, it's very understandable why the refs did blow the whistle there. So that will bring up fourth down. East all the way back at their own four-yard line. Eight minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the half. Before the snap, we have a penalty flag. Penalty before the snap. Bell. Punting away for the Golden Bears is number 19, Luther Bell. Kick is up and away. Drops down at about the 28 yard line. It's a great bounce there for Foreman. Bouncing back towards the line of scrimmage of the where East punted it. Um, definitely not helping East situation right now. Having the only about 28 yards to go to score. Uh, hopefully Foreman offense can capitalize, but at the same time, the East defense really needs a big stop here, even if they hold them to three points. Uh, that would definitely be a minor victory in the situation they're in. Spurns in a very favorable position here. First down and 10, ball at the East 21. Man in motion. Hands it off around the left side, looking for some space. Penalty on the play, and he's out at about the five-yard line. That was number one, Anthony Hightower, carrying the ball there. Great run there by Anthony Hightower. Uh, just unfortunate that there was a penalty there at the end, but uh, great block by Sean O'Hoyle coming off the edge, and then uh, Anthony Hightower being athletic enough to 
to get outside and find an opening in the lane. Sean O'Horo back here in the game at running back after taking the last drive off. First down and 19, ball at the East 30. Thomas takes it, hands it off to O'Hara up the middle, gets stuffed. That will be a loss of a yard on that play. Pre-snap, you could really see that East was bringing the house there on an all-out blitz. Uh, in a situation like that, a lot of teams, when you have a more established quarterback, you're going to try to throw them a place from where they're blitzing from. Uh, kind of harder when you have a, a green quarterback, though. Barn showing a four wide out set. Mahoro in the backfield. Looking probably at a pass here in this second and long. Thomas takes it, drops back, looking, gets tackled as he throws the ball. Incomplete. They went to a, a, a fade concept, it's called, down there, where the outside guy runs a straight vertical route and the inside guy runs an out route. Uh, from, it, from what it looked like, Terrence Thomas did read that correctly as Anthony Hightower kind of opened up underneath the safety. Uh, but the East defense alignment getting great penetration there and getting on the Thomas before he could release the ball. Now I'll bring up third and 22, ball at the 33-yard line. Thomas takes it, looks incomplete. That pass intended for number 19, Luke Huzika. Broken up by number eight, Dewan Waller. There's a fourth down for the Spartans, and they'll send out their punt unit. Seven minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the half. Ball of 33. Punt is up and away. Bounces down just. Bounces down just to the T-yard line, but rolls back into the end zone for a touchback. Great punt once again, but just the Boardman uh, team there needed to have more awareness of where the ball was and, and try to keep it out of the end zone. But again, just this punter is having an amazing night, and you can see he has a lot of ball control and, and placement control, which you don't see a lot of a high school punter, especially one this young. An interesting stat is that Terrence Thomas has two completions tonight, both of them being the touchdowns that they have. Um, hopefully he can get some more completions going throughout. Um, the East offense will take the field. Number 19, Luther Bell in at quarterback. Bell takes it, hands it off to Harris, running around the right side down at the 28 just before the first down. Penalty on the play. So it's really interesting to see uh, the East offense is actually pretty dangerous when they're not pinned against their own end zone, but once again, just a penalty hurting them there. That'll be an illegal shift on the East Golden Bears. That'll bring them back to the 15-yard line. First down. Uh, first down and 15. Six minutes and 55 seconds left to play in the half. Clock is ticking. If the Bears could play penalty-free football, I think this would be a pretty interesting game, maybe even have another score, but they just got to stop hurting themselves, really. Looks like the Golden Bears are taking their second time out of the half, and we will be back after the timeout. Twenty-one news. Let's get 
right to our top story tonight. More experienced reporters. A new Wilmington Stand arrest. Right here in Lordstown. I'm Telling more local stories. We'll look at efforts Boy is curb. recovering from a broken Around our Good valley. Good afternoon here in Youngtown. Right up because you expect. It's important for everyone. Like no place like home. More local news. In Mercer County Court. 21 News is our valley's number one local news. Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality First hardwoods down, are delivered 15, right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trips, chip lap and skin. Uh, takes it. Runs on the right side, doesn't go very far. No gain on that play. Great job there by the Spartans and the and Getting well, upfield to the East Office line and not making a play. Ordered easily, at the delivered conveniently. Enjoyed comfortably. Bear Bear Brothers second down, 15, no gain on that play. Six minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the half. Clock is ticking. Interesting to see if East might throw here for the first time in the game. Definitely in a situation where they're going to need that. with two wideouts. Takes it, hands it off to Harris around the right side. Harris fighting for a few extra yards. Got him wrapped up at about the 18, gain of about three on that play. Really tough run there by the running back for the Golden Bears. Uh, just keeping the feet moving in a pile of Spartans. Brought down by number 64, Jake Powell on that play. Spartans are going into a nickel package here, meaning uh, five defensive backs with another defensive lineman. Uh, usually a defense will do this in preparation of a pass, so maybe this is the time that East will finally uh, air it out uh, for the first time tonight. Third down and 11, ball at the 11-yard. Ball at the... Takes it. Ruben running around the left side. Dumps it off to Bell. Bell gets knocked down at about the 30-yard line. And that will pick up the first down. Look at that. Um, kind of a, a RPO, a read pass option there. Um, Ruben did a great job of stretching the play out and making the outside linebacker commit to either the pass or the run. And once he committed to the run, uh, just a little dunk over his head for a great pickup of a, of a first down for the first pass of the game. Look to see a lot more uh, run pass options when you decide to throw uh, out of the Golden Bears. Four minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the half. Clock is ticking. First and 10. Ball at the 31 yard line. East with the three wide set, one man in the backfield. Valley takes it, hands it off. Runs around the right side, no gain on that play. That'll be a loss of about two yards. Uh, 52 there, Cortland Love. A beautiful swim move to get past the offensive guard and then forcing the running back to go outside because uh, Cortland was in the gap that he was going to run. And then I think he may have got a hand on him before he was tackled. But a uh, great play there by Cortland Love. Nice swim move to get upfield and over the guard and then create chaos in the backfield. Laws of three on that play, second down and 13, ball at the 28. Tally takes it, runs around the left side. He's got some space in front of him. He's at the 40, at the 30, being pursued there. Down, out of bounds at the 22 yard line. What an electric football player by Ruben Tally. It looked like they may have had him in the backfield, but just that speed that he has on him to get outside there and get downfield. Um, he's just a great great uh, addition to the East football team coming from Austin Elm Fitch of last year, transferring over to East, and, and he's really made an impact in helping this team produce some yards offensively. Ball will be marked down at the Spartan 21-yard line. Three minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the half. First and ten. Who 
Luther Bell in at quarterback. Takes it, hands it off around the left side. Swan defense doing a nice job there, but there's a penalty on the play. Looks like it might be a face mask. And now the theme is kind of switching. Borman lets up a big play uh, because of a, a missed tackle or two, and then now creating a penalty where they would have had loss of yards for now giving East a possibly a first down. Face mask, uh, face mask penalty on Borman there. Now we bring up first and nine. Ball at the 20 yard line. Bell takes it, hands it off. Nice gap there. Down at the 15. East is starting to put together a really good drive here. Seems like they found their rhythm offensively. Um, now a second and, and manageable where now they're in a position where you can maybe take a shot to the end zone or keep pounding the rock the way they have because it seems like they found a scheme that's working out for them. Some outside runs that are really helping them. Second and five. Ball at the 16 yard line. Two minutes and 15 seconds left to play in the half. Clock is ticking. Bell takes it, fakes the handoff, looking, throws to the right, incomplete. That pass was intended for number six, Vincent Steele. That'll stop the clock, two minutes and three seconds left in the half, third and five. Ball still at the 16. Again, East is battling against the play clock. Looks like East is taking their final timeout of the half. We'll be back after the timeout. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last hundred years, my family has farmed in Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 19... Third and five, ball to 16. Luther Bell into the shotgun. Harris in the backfield. Bell takes it, runs up the left side, fighting for a few extra yards, wrapped up, brought down at the Spartan 11 yard line. Plays like that are what help a team really rally around an individual. Uh, knowing the situation, knowing that they desperately need a score here to get some momentum, and then him just fighting for some extra yards to doesn't look like he got the first down, but getting in position where they can capitalize here. Just short of the first down here, fourth and one. Minute and 30 seconds left in the first half. 
And now Borman is bringing in an extra linebacker, meaning they're probably expecting a run here. Um, so if they do throw the ball, Borman would be at a disadvantage having less defensive backs. A lot of play clock issues tonight. Keifer Bell in at quarterback. Bell takes it, looking, gets sworn by the Spartan defense behind the line of scrimmage. That is a huge loss there. Big play for the Spartans, and they will turn it over on downs. In that type of situation, you think he's not having the most success throwing the ball tonight, along with not attempting that many throws. And really this drive coming together offensively, running the ball, you think that they may have tried to run it there, but they probably saw something that they thought could work, but the line just did not hold up for them to get the opportunity to get after it. But a great play defensively by Boardman, rallying to the football, um, and the defensive line penetrating through the offensive East offensive line uh, disrupting the quarterback's progression. Spartans will take the ball at their own 16, first and 10, 55 seconds left to play in the half. Thomas takes it, hands it off up the middle. That's Ortiz carrying the ball, running around the right side, looking for a few extra yards, gets brought down to 21, gain of five. Good run there by Ortiz. Just moving methodically throughout the line of scrimmage and finding an opening out to the right side. Foreman trying to run the clock out here. Second and five. Thomas takes it, fakes the handoff, runs up the middle, brought down at about the 27. And that looks like it'll probably be the last play of the half. Although that looks like it's going to end the half, two great plays there that they might want to go back to uh, to get some short yardage and both five-yard gains. So maybe the second half look back to some inside quarterback runs uh, for the Boardman offense. And that will bring an end to the first half. Your score, Spartans 14, East 7. We'll be back after halftime.
present the 2020 edition of the Boardman and Spartan Marching Band.
Moore. Featuring the Spartan Silks, Sweethearts, and vocalists Joey Howard, Bradley McCurdy, and Savannah Watkins, here is Twist and Shout.
We angled 16 times for net yardage of 115 yards. Leading rushers were really talented, three carries for 47 yards. Frank Harris had five carries for 23 yards. Kaylin Adley had one carry for 39 yards in the touchdown. Through the air, the Lord knows the one, two, and 12 yards. We were tied, looked up, and we were about with that. For the Spartans, Spartans ran the ball 12 times for net yards of 83 yards. Leading rushers were Tanner and Thomas back there with 56 yards. Through the air, the Spartans were 4 of 10 for 50 yards. With two touchdown passes, Tanner and Thomas did all that game. Leading, leading receiver was Luke Kuzika. Sparks total yards in the first half was 133. Each total yards in the first half, 127. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please get out of the 50-50 tickets. Tonight's 50-50 winner will take home $294. Winning ticket tonight, Number four four zero nine two zero. Again, one more time. That winning ticket is four four zero nine two zero. Please bring that winning ticket to the press box. We will not take your word for it. Tonight's halftime show was sponsored by the Warren Booster Club. The Board of Booster Club thanks our many donors who help us support Board of local schools and its students. Visit www.boardofboosters.org to learn more about the Board of Booster Club and how you can help. Back, ladies and gentlemen, some halftime stats here. Foreman has picked up seven first downs, while East has picked up three. Foreman has 12, uh, 12 net, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 12 rushing attempts with a net yardage of 83 yards. East has 16 uh, rushing attempts with a net yardage of 115 yards. Foreman has attempted four passes and completed 10. Uh, with zero interceptions for 50 yards. East has attempted one pass. Uh, uh, attempted two passes and completed one with zero, in, uh, zero interceptions for a total of 12 yards. Foreman has 100, 133 total yards on offense and East has 127. East selected to defer to Borman for the first half, so East will be getting the ball. Taking away is number 29, Carson Esten. Kick is up and away. Thank you. 
What a way to start off the second half. That'll be an uh, offside penalty on Gorman. if they could spark a big play and start some momentum on their side to start off the second half. Uh, so anyone's ball game, only a one score difference between the Spartans and the Golden Bears. Kick is up and away, fielded at the 15. Harris on the return. Running around the right side, gets through the first line defenders. He has some men in front of him, and he is brought down at the 48 yard line. Frank Harris on the return. Frank Harris on the return. Down what a play by the kicker. Great tackle there. Definitely probably didn't think she'd be getting uh, action and tackling tonight, but really good job of. Getting his head on the football and making the tackle. Turn, As the last line of defense there, or else that may have been a really bad start for the Spartans. But great return for Easton. He's got in a great field position. I'll bring a first and 10 ball at the 47 yard line. Nation on the United Promotion. Hands it off, up the middle. Vincent Steele, Vincent Steele on the carry there. One thing these uh, Golden Bear running backs have actually proven tonight is it's going to take more than one defender to, to bring them to the ground. Uh, once again, even though not a big gain for them, it took multiple Spartan defenders to bring, bring them to the ground, and uh, it's been proven throughout the night. Second down and nine. Ethan Bell on center. Dumps it off. On the left side. That's Harris again. Gain of maybe a yard on that play. Could have been a lot worse than it was for the Bears there. Gorman blitz an outside linebacker. Just missed the tackle. Bears go back to the And it looks like another penalty before the snap. Looks like Gary Walker penalty number 38 just came out of the game. I have to assume he was saying something. He was still late after the play. And no Golden Bears in sight, but he just can't do stuff like that. That's a 15-yard penalty against Golden Bears. 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 That's a 15-yard penalty Wrapped up by the Spartans at about the 25-yard line. Number nine, that was Smith. number nine, Jay Smith, on the reception there. And a throw like that it was, is a that great play to get the quarterback kind of through. And, down and, down and, down down the field. and once again, it's a five Spartan defenders that are the ground. So this is a very tough team, and they're showing on this drive. Second and four, ball at the 25-yard line. Nine minutes and 50 seconds left in the third quarter. East with a two wide out set. Two men in the backfield. Bell takes it, hands it off up the middle to steal. Gain of maybe a play. 
It's like it happens a lot, a lot in that I formation. They definitely learned from the first half there. They were able to get some big plays and spark defense by running the ball. So interesting to see what they'll do here. As you can see, they're starting to throw the ball a little bit. That'll bring up third and four. No gain on the play. Ball at the 25. Bell takes it, hands it off. Running on the right side. Wrapped up nicely back at the 30 yard line. Cameron Edward on the carry. He was brought down behind the line of scrimmage by number five, Jaheim Brought down Johnson. by number five, Jaheim Johnson on the play. Great play by Jaheim Johnson there. Coming downhill fast um, and just really making a play behind the line of scrimmage. A lot of guys in that situation where it's an open field type of play, um, they, they tend to get kind of scared and slow down instead of just coming and attacking the football. And he did a great job attacking the football and trusting in his ability. And it created a big time play because if he would have missed, that would have been a big play for the Golden Bears. Loss of five on that play. Bring up four Looks like the Bears are going to go for it here. Bell takes it, looking, scrambles around to the right side. Penalty marked on the field. Looks like he was brought down just before the first down. Brought down by Braden Joseph. Braden Joseph, another great um, addition to the Corbin Spartans team. It's a holding call on the Golden Bears, but the Spartans decline, and that will result in a turnover on down. With 7 minutes and 49 seconds left to play in the third quarter, the Spartans will start at their own 30 yard or 23-yard uh, line. The Golden Bears, when we get back in this game, they have to capitalize in situations like that. So penalties and loss of yardage are definitely not going to help them. Spartans starting a decent amount in their own territory. First and 10. Thomas takes it, hands it off to O'Horo up the middle. Gain of about two or three yards on that play. Here's our down at the Brought down by the number 10, Wes. Spartans really not getting much going running the ball tonight. Having about 86 yards rushing. I'll bring up second and nine. Seven minutes and 10 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Uh, uh, clock is ticking. Ohoro in the backfield. Thomas takes it, runs up the middle, gets wrapped up by the Golden Bear defense. Thomas is sacked on the play. Getting credit with that set to number 10 to the defense left. Linebackers and defensive line are playing great to start off the second half. On the first play, of the Spartan try, keeping Ohoro in the backfield, left. creating a tackle, and then just there, uh, keeping the elusive. Thomas for a short game. Loss of a yard on that play, third and 10. Thomas takes it, drops back, gets sacked. Looks like a fun on the play. And the Golden Bears will recover. What a play by the Bears defensive line. They are really coming out to play in the second half. Getting up field, getting through the Spartan offensive line. I think that might be the third or fourth time they've got to Thomas tonight. While he was passing, but uh, that one proved to be fatal for the Spartan offense, uh, resulting in a turnover of downs. And now the East Bears are in a great position to strike and score and tie this ball game up. Believe that was number six, Vincent Steele on the tackle there. First and ten for the Golden Bears, ball for Borman 16. Six minutes and 24 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Bell in under center. Bell takes it, hands it off to Harris up the middle. Harris fighting for a few extra yards. Nice gain there, gain of about right six or seven yards in that play. 
second half and you even saw them in the first half. I think they really half, found their rhythm and it's going well for us. Yeah, it looks like we have an injured bear on the field and we will be back after after the injury. Kelly Calvin Jones, the Valley leader in business, home and auto insurance since 1911. Proving that knowledge is power. Proud supporter of the Portland Local Schools. Thank you to our third quarter sponsor, Ellie Calvin Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to make a round of applause for the evening gold medal number two, Cameron Howard. Second and five for the Bears. Ball at the 11 yard line. Six minutes left to play in the third quarter. And a penalty before the snap. Ball start on the Bears. It's just something you hate to see. They're in great position. Second and five, which is a position that any offense would die to be in. And then they just hurt themselves and go back to a second and Second and 10, ball at the 16 yard line. Botch snap. Looks like it may be a good false start. False start on the Golden Bears on my part. Another five yards. Just a repeating theme for them tonight is they get in great position where they kind of screw or really produce in a certain situation and then uh, just penalties. They, uh, to start the second half, they had 53 total yards of penalties. So that is definitely playing now. Second and 15, ball at the 21. Man motion. Penalty there. Another false start on the Golden Bears. This is a problem you see some teams run into offensively. Uh, players are maybe a little antsy to get going. And I think the coach, after this drive, really needs to sit them down and tell them, just look at the football, don't listen to the cadence, because when you start to do that, you might jump a little early if the center is a little late on the snap. So what a lot of coaches will tell their players is just look at the football and turn off your ears. So hopefully they can do that now, going from a second and five now to a second and very long. Second and 20, ball at the 26. Another penalty before the snap. Looks like there'll be a delay of game on East. And the East Golden Bears are having a snowball effect here. I love that. They need to take a deep breath, regroup, and focus on just the next play. Don't worry about the situation and just run a play at this point. Um, and hopefully they can start something big here. It's a loss of 20 yards from penalties alone. Second and 25, ball to 31. Tally takes it, runs around the right side. Almost picked off there by number six, Sean O'Hara. Great job by Sean O'Hara there. You saw earlier in the first half, Ruben capitalized on one of those run pass options where you make the outside linebacker choose either the run or the pass. Sean O'Hara strained it out to the sideline and played both really well and then uh, made Ruben Talley decide what to do. And once he decided to throw the ball, Sean got back in the coverage and um, O'Hara made a great play there. So that'll bring up third down. 25 yards to go, ball still at the 31, four minutes and 44 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Tally takes it, looking, fires to the right side, caught it, but was he inbounds? 
Looks like that was incomplete. Really good throw there by the East quarterback, and um, it looks like the city was out of bounds when he caught it, though, so great play. But now they're in a situation where they do not have a, a place kicker that they can hit from this far out, so um, it's just a fourth and long they have to go for and kind of hope for the best because the punt wouldn't do much at this point either. Fourth and 25. He's showing a four wide out set. Tally takes it, drops back under pressure, runs around to the right side, incomplete. Blaine Strines there on an amazing quarterback hurry up, uh, forcing the East quarterback to get rid of the football. Uh, someone that was not playing last week and is back this week. Great job by him. Definitely a spark club for the Spartan defense. Creating a big play there on a fourth down. Amazing job there by number 30, Blaine Strons. That will result in a turnover on downs. The Spartans will take over at their own 31. With four minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Now this is a situation as an offense that you have a, a situation where you can now build on your score and hopefully uh, get some momentum on your side. Man motion, that's a Horo. Thomas fakes the handoff, running around the left side, looking for defenders in front of him, fights for extra yards, and he's out at about the 48. Really interesting play call there to start off uh, this drive, having Thomas is the only back and the running back out in the slot. Bring him in motion and then just reading that defensive end for the Golden Bears and making him be wrong no matter what he chooses. But then Thomas to cut it backfield and create something out of nothing is very, uh, very athletic. First and 10 ball at the 48. Thomas hands it off to Ohoro up the middle. Doesn't go very far. Gain of maybe a yard on that play. Once again, the East defensive line just obliterating the Spartan offensive line and getting in the backfield. Looks like if they want something to happen, um, the Spartans are going to have to work outside zone type of plays and get outside of the box because uh, the East defensive line is winning every single play up front. No gain on that play. Second down and 10, ball at the 48. Man motion, that's Anthony Hightower. Fakes the handoff, runs up the middle. Brought down just before the 40. Terrence Thomas once again showing great athleticism. You see him there, pulled on a read option, almost making a guy miss, shoelace tackle. If he were to get away from that, then who knows, it may have been a touchdown with uh, the speed that he possesses. So once again, a great athletic play and a great read under pressure um, for Terrence Thomas. Third down and two, ball at the 40. Warming any signals from the sideline. Foreman showing a free wide out set. Mohoro in the backfield. Thomas takes it, runs around the right side, picks up the first down, gets past the defenders, stumbles, brought down at about the 17 yard line. Another amazing play by Terrence Thomas. Sean O'Hara on a great block there. Almost loses the football, but keeps it in his hands and then does a smart play and just kind of make sure he gets it and goes down. But another huge play by Terrence Thomas in this Spartan offense. First down and 10, ball at the East 19. Two minutes and six seconds left to play in the third quarter. Clock is ticking. Thomas takes it, hands it off to Ohoro, up the middle. Ohoro brought down at about the seven, at the seven yard or eight yard line. Sean Ohoro finally getting a good yards there. See him make a cut to the back side of the play, getting north and south and holding onto the football for a Spartan first down. Gain of 12 yards, and I'll move the chain. First and goal, ball at the eight. Thomas fakes the handoff, running around the left side. Looks again to the end zone, and he does. Touchdown, Spartans. What a play and what a drive for Terrence Thomas in this Spartan offense. Uh, 
looking back, it looked like there may have been a miscommunication or a missed handoff, but the athleticism and the wherewithal by Terrence Thomas there to not make a play worse and just getting outside and using his speed to score a touchdown for this Spartan offense. Finds out the kick to the extra point, number 29, Carson Nassif. Holding is number 10, Colin Thomas. Last snap there, recovered by number 10, Colin Thomas. That'll bring the score to 27, Sparns lead. With a minute and 41 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Very impressive drive there by the Gordon Spartans. Led by Terrence Thomas and the offensive line started, starting to kind of come into their own there towards the end with the run game. They struggled a lot in the first half and even at the start of this drive, but uh, just you can tell they wore down the East Gold Bears and, and started to open up some holes for uh, Sean O'Hara and Terrence Thomas to run the football. But just great execution all around by all 11 players to produce a six points there for the Spartans. Another situation that can be interesting here is East was down two touchdowns in the first half, and uh, you really looked at if they were going to respond well or if they were going to break, and they did respond. They've been responding all game, so right now is a big point in the game for the Bears to try and come back and, and get something going here, just get some momentum on their side and, and stop the penalties. Sorry, son, out there kicking unit. Once again, 29, Carson Essett out to kick. Kick rolls around, runs around to the right side, brought out about the 40-yard line. That was fielded by number five, Tim Davis. It has not hurt the Spartans too much tonight in terms of missed tackles, but going on weeks to come, they're definitely going to have to minimize those because once again, a missed tackle led to an extra 15 yards. So uh, they really need to minimize those the rest of this game if they want to keep this lead because the East Coast Bears have some very dangerous weapons that if they get in the free space, they can create problems. Bears will take it at their own 40-yard line, first and 10. A minute and 29 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Bell takes it, hands it off, runs around the left side. Gain of maybe a yard on that play. So from st some stats for the Spartans on that last drive, they had six plays for 69 yards and uh, two minutes and 50 seconds. And then so far in the game, Terrence Thomas has 11 carries for 127 yards. Spartans becoming a little one-sided since losing their quarterback, but Terrence Thomas is making the most of the opportunity and really helping to carry the Spartan offense. Second and nine for Bowen Bears. Ball to 41. Bell hands it off to Harris. Right side, gain of the yard on that play. That's exactly how the Spartans need to start uh, this drive. After scoring, coming out, their defensive front, their linebackers, coming downhill, rallying the football, and making plays where two yards equal about, or two, excuse me, two plays have equal about one yard gain for the East Gold Bears. Uh, if they can stop them here, this would be demoralizing for the East Gold Bears and hopefully could swing all the momentum in the Spartans. So, th so that'll bring up third down and nine, ball at the 41. And the Bears run out the clock to the end of the third quarter. Your score, Sparns 20, East Golden Bears 7. We will be back at the beginning of the fourth quarter.
energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. Third and nine for the East Golden Bears. Bell takes it, runs around the left side, gets wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Great tackle there. So it looked like a little bit of miscommunication there for the Golden Bears. Number 24, the running back, looked to slip under the outside linebacker, and it seemed like that was supposed to be a pass play, but the quarterback seemed to want to run it. So a little bit of some miscues there, which have kind of been another theme for the Golden Bears tonight. They just need to clean those penalties and, and mental errors up to have a success, successful drive. Wrapped up by number nine, Stephen Conti on that play. And bring a fourth down. Bell punting the ball away. It'll be down at about the 28 yard line. One of the better punts tonight for the Golden Bears along with it bouncing in favor of them. So Spartans have another opportunity here to further the lead. And uh, if they do here, this would be detrimental to the East Golden Bears um, in terms of time left in the game and morale. So interesting to see how the Spartans are going to come out here, if they're going to be conservative and try and run the clock out or actually go down and try and score. This will start the Spartans' first drive of the fourth quarter. First and ten, ball at the 33. Thomas takes it, hands it off to Ohoro. Ohoro had a gap there, but he tripped. Oh, an amazing hole there by the offensive line. A good counter concept where they pull an offensive lineman from the opposite side to come across the line uh, and create a bigger hole uh, opposite of where the running back was going so he can cut back little misdirection and almost had it. Just one guy got a shoelace on Ohoro to stop him from a really big game. Gain of three yards in that play. Second and seven. Ball at the 36. Thomas takes it. Hands off to Ohoro at the middle. Ohoro gains about two or three yards. So here it looks like the Spartans are going a little bit conservative, uh, which they tend to do when they're only up by two touchdowns. So uh, hopefully they can convert it here and, and continue the drive and ultimately maybe further the lead. But the East Golden Bears being resilient and still playing hard defense up front. Swarn showing a four wide out set. Ohoro in the backfield. Thomas takes it, drops back, under pressure, evades the tacklers. Dumps it off. Throws it out of bounds. That'll bring up, that'll bring up fourth down. East Golden Bears calling a great defensive scheme there. As you can see, they, they blitz most of their players, risking a throw down field, but knowing a very green quarterback in Thomas in terms of throwing the ball into a blitz. Uh, it paid out well for the East Golden Bears, and now they will be getting the ball back and an opportunity to chase uh, the Spartans' lead. Carson Essett out to punt. Be fielded by Tally. Goes out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Carson Essett doing an amazing job tonight of keeping the ball away from the athletes that East has back to punt return. Uh, 
and really that would be, I think, a, one of the main problems that uh, Boardman could have is if you have guys like that in open space. But once again, this punter is doing an amazing job of keeping the ball away from them, getting a lot of distance on them, and pinning them out, out of bounds or inside of uh, their own side of the, the East Golden Bears' own side of the field. So just a great performance here tonight by this kicker and punter for the Spartans. First and 10 for Golden Bears. Ball at their own 32. Luther Bell in a quarterback. Bears showing a four wide out set. Maybe that's Harris in the backfield. Bell takes it under pressure, dumps it over the middle. And Fumbled with the ball a bit, but he recovered it. What a catch by. I believe that was Ruben. Uh, Ruben Talley. What a play by Ruben Talley. Once again, showing uh, the athleticism out of him and his ability to play multiple positions. Ball with the ball on the ground, in the contact, and still held on. The quarterback making a pretty accurate pass downfield. Uh, maybe create a spark here for the Golden Bears offense. First and 10, ball at the 47. Hands it off to Harris. Runs around the right side. Gained of a yard on that play. Great cut there by Harris. Didn't quite see who it was, but uh, one of the Spartan defenders had him in the backfield, and Harris made a great cut back inside towards the, towards the interior line. And um, Even though it's not a big gain, still better than a loss of yardage. Set that'll bring up second and nine, ball to 48 with eight minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Clock is ticking. Bell takes it, hands it off to Harris around the right side, gets into an ice cab, runs into a few defenders and he's down at the 40, picks up the first down. Really hard run there by Harris. And you can see his, he has breakaway speed. Uh, if he gets into a more open space and there's maybe some better blocking downfield, could be a scary sight there for the Boardman defense, but really way to put his shoulder down and finish that run, that run hard and leave his mark here tonight. First and 10, ball at the 39. Takes it, hands it off to Harris. Harris running up the middle, stumbled a bit, and he's down at the 28. Another great play by Harris. The East Golden Bears running a draw play there, meaning the quarterback set for a pass and then hands it off to the running back, hopefully creating the linebacker for the Spartans to leave the uh, box, which is where the line of scrimmage heard the offensive defensive lineman are creating an opening in the middle of the field for the running back. So uh, that proved to work very well, and now another first down for the Golden Bears. First and 10, ball at the 29, gain of 10 yards on that last play. Seven minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Clock is ticking. Ruben takes it, runs around the left side. Gain, uh, runs out of bounds just about the line of scrimmage there at the 29-yard line. Ruben made a couple of good cuts there. Ran about 30 total yards for gain of really nothing. So um, just the smart defense in terms of that, you really want to string out athletes and, and make them go sideline to sideline instead of north and south. And um, the Spartan defense did a great job of that, of forcing him to the sideline, even though he made a few guys miss. Um, since they played all together, 11 guys together, no gain on the play. So great job there by the Spartan defense. Second and 10, ball up in 29. Bell takes it, dumps it off, down at the at the 26-yard line. Stephen Conti did a great job there of keeping the ball in front of him, not letting a, a play get worse than it was. In the Spartan situation, that's what you want. You don't need to get an interception or make a huge play. Just keep the ball in front of you, come up and make a tackle for a very short yard and, um, gain for the Bears. And 
now as far as our great third and kind of long situation where you have to think the Bears might have to throw the ball here. So great job there by Stephen Conti. Cornell Kennedy on the reception for that play. Three yard gain. Third and seven. Bell takes it. Rolls around to the left side. Gets wrapped up. Dumps the ball out at the last minute. What and what a play there. <laughs> what an effort the, by the Golden Bears quarterback. Probably not what the coach wanted. Maybe made his heart skip a beat, but it worked out to get them in a fourth and short. Um, wow. I didn't even see him actually like throw it. I just see the ball pop out of the pile. <laughs> I agree. You see a pile of East and Golden Bears and Spartans together, and the ball fly out for a very accurate pass to the running back. So... Uh, set that up nicely here for a fourth and short. Fourth and one. Ball at the 19-yard line. East will go for it. Do we sneak up the middle? It looks like... Did they get it? Waiting for the... Waiting for a signal from the official. So while we wait for the signal, one of the key things to a quarterback sneak is your running back coming up and pushing the quarterback behind him, which the East, Bar East Golden Bears did not do. So it keeps it reliant on just the quarterback and the offensive line, making this a lot closer than it had to have been. I think if they would have had an extra push there that maybe this would have been a lot more distinct and easy to call. So um, something that else they might need to tighten up going into the next week. But Referring to the Golden Bears. Looks like they're bringing out the chains to measure. And it looks like they did not pick up the first down. That will result in a turnover on downs at the Spartan Zone. At the Spartan Zone 19-yard uh, line. Great persistence there by the Spartan defense. And again, I've referred to this term a few times of bending but not breaking. Um, they let them get a few plays. They let that crazy ball out of the pile. Uh, big yardage play to get them inside a one yard possibility for the first time. But Spartan defense getting low defensive line and getting a pushback to not allow that first down to happen. And uh, with about five minutes left in the game, uh, East needs something to happen here. First and 10, ball to 19. Thomas takes it, running around the left side for a big gain here. Forces his way through defenders, and he is out at about the 45-yard line. Nice stiff arm there on the play, though. Bring it up to the 45-yard line. Sean O'Hara lead blocking for Terrence Thomas here, and then just Terrence Thomas doing it all with his legs tonight, having a tremendous night on the ground, making it work for him, and... I think the Spartans are doing a great job of adjusting to the situation they are in quarterback and letting Terrence Thomas be an athlete. Um, and they really grew from last week. Where I think they tried to make him throw more and become one-dimensional. And tonight, they're just using him to his ability. First and 10, handoff to Sean O'Horo. O'Horo running around the left side, out of bounds at about the 24-yard line. And, and that's how you put together a nice drive. Sean O'Hara on the play before, a good block downfield, spurring for Thomas, and then Thomas handing the ball off to Sean, then Thomas creating a fake to pull a defender away, creating a big game for O'Hara. So um, the Spartans are really playing well back and forth together. Um, this offense is really finding a groove here at the end of this game, and you can see a lot of growth from last week. Here we see it again, O'Hara cutting back, making another cut and getting to the outside, um, and there's See him get two hands on the football and, and being smart with it. So great job there by the Spartan offense. Bring up first and 10, ball at the 24. Four minutes and 59 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Thomas fakes the handoff, runs with it. Brought down at the 18. 
the resiliency here tonight on both sides of the ball with the uh, ball carriers, um, just a lot of grit running the ball tonight, which you love to see, and a lot of people refer to that as Youngstown football. Um, and you just love to see it, not making more than one guy have to tackle you, not giving up on, on one hit. So great job on both sides of the ball, just keeping their feet moving and always fighting for extra yards. Really gritty performance tonight by both sides of the team rushing. Second and five, ball at the East 19-yard line. Four minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the final quarter. The clock is ticking. Thomas takes it, hands it off to Ohoro up the middle. Ohoro fighting for a few extra yards. Gain of about two or three yards on that play. Good job there by Ohoro, not trying to dance, knowing the situation. Knowing you have four minutes left in the game, just putting his head down and getting what he can get. Um, just really good football awareness there by the Spartan offense and knowing the situation. Gain of a yard on that play, third and four. Three minutes and 45 seconds left to play in the final quarter, clock is ticking. Smart showing a three wide out set. Thomas takes it with a few lead blockers out in front of him. Looking for a gap, keeps fighting, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Spartans. Another great play by the Spartan offense. Great blocking on the edge. And Thomas just finding his way into the end zone again. He has a nose for the goal line, which we love to see in a, an athletic football player because it really just shows the grit, too. So great job there by Terrence Thomas of staying in bounds, finding the end zone, and um, knowing the awareness down the sideline. So great job there by the Spartan offense. Great drive of just pounding the rock and finding a way to the end zone. Um, you can kind of see the East defense starting to wear down, but um, you have a lot of factors in that. And one, they have a lot of guys going both ways, and then the Spartan offense, the second half, has just come out really intense. The offensive line made some adjustments at halftime, and it really paid off for the Spartan offense in the second half. Well, it looks like that was actually marked out at the two, so that'll bring up first and goal for the Spartans. Ball at the two-yard line, three minutes and 22 seconds left in the final quarter. Still a great effort by Terrence Thomas on that last play. Looks like this East Gold Bear is getting to his feet there in the end zone. Um, glad to see that. You don't want to see anyone get hurt, especially this late in the game where you definitely don't need that. So um, that's good to see that he's up on his feet. Still fighting here at the end. There's no quit in them, and they're uh, really finishing this game with with some dignity and and not giving up at all, which is really important to see. Especially going into next week, you you don't want to have low morale, so you take something good away from this game. I think their defensive line has played outstanding tonight, so I think that's one high point for the Golden Bears uh, tonight against the Spartans. See that line try to prove themselves here. First and goal, ball at the two-yard line. Three minutes and 22 seconds left in the final quarter. Score Steve. is at 20 to seven, Spartans lead. Uh, love to see another angle of that, to see how close he was, because that looked really close to the sideline. Thomas takes it, hands it off to Ohora, up the middle, into the end zone. Touchdown, Spartans. Great job there by the offensive line, creating a huge hole for the back Sean Ohoro. And then Sean Ohoro just getting north and south, putting his head down, knowing where the goal line was. 
to get into the end zone for his first score of the night. So the Spartans have just been electric on the ground tonight. Uh, and they just, they're finding a way to win. Um, they don't have the best passing system in right now because of uh, their more truer passer, Jason Treveri, being out. But Terrence Thomas has just been electric tonight, along with the entire offense rushing the ball. So great job to the Spartans. Extra point is good. And that'll bring the score to 27, uh, Borman 27, East 7. With three minutes and 18 seconds left to play in the final quarter of the game. I'm very intrigued here to see how the Gold Bears are gonna respond to this. It seems like it's a bit out of reach now for them to really create anything to come back but the three minutes but you really want to see what kind of fight they have here uh, left especially from a coaching staff as a coaching staff you want to see what your players are like willing to do in a time where it kind of seems like they're not going to win but if they still have some pride and, and still want to go out with uh, with some dignity so let's see how the Golden Bears can respond here and hopefully they'll keep fighting to the last whistle and I think the coaches would be happy with that uh, to the Golden Bears. Send out their kicking team. Ruben Talley back to receive for the Golden Bears. Kicking off is once again number 29, Carson Essid, who has been having a solid night tonight. Low kick. Running around the left side. Down at about the 42. That was. Number five, Tim Davis on the reception there. Good thought there by uh, the Spartan special teams there. You want to swoop kick it, and times like this, you want a big play to happen. Usually, you're going to give up more yards than the average, but it will limit big plays for like maybe a return for a touchdown. So, uh, good decision there to squib it this late in the game. And, limit maybe a big big play possibility. I also have the Golden Bears first and ten. Ball at the 42 yard line. Three minutes and eight seconds left to play in the final quarter. East with a four wide out set. One man in the backfield. Coming out throwing the ball which shows that they still, they're not backing down. They're still going to come out and try and fight. You definitely see some fatigue on the Golden Bears side, but you just hope that they can finish strong and and be mentally strong here and uh, keep fighting to the last whistle. And we see a new quarterback out on that last play, number 16, Andrew Blackman. This is a great time now to get some younger guys in and see how they can respond to that Friday night feeling under the lights. Uh, in a live game situation. So another thing the coach are gonna look for here is some younger players to step up and uh, play well. Four wide out set, one man in the backfield. Ackman takes it, throws to the right side. That's complete. Great play there by the Golden Bears offense. Quarterback doing an amazing job of throwing a slant route into his body, which is where you want it. That way only he can make the play. And then just an amazing effort there uh, by Morris um, to get upfield and, and make a play after the catch. And they're showing some life here towards the end. Not enough to come back and win the game, but definitely they're showing some fight. And you, you just really love to see that as a coaching staff from East. I'll bring up first and 10 ball at the Spartan 42. Two minutes and 27 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Blackman under pressure, and he is sacked way behind the line of scrimmage, all the way back at the 46-yard line. Amazing play there by the Spartan defensive line. 
Just a great play there by Richie Evans, getting through the line of scrimmage. He, and he was from the backside. Uh, he tracked, that, tracked down the quarterback there. And then what you want to see from a young quarterback is a lot of times they'll try and make a play in that situation and end up fumbling, turning the ball over. He did a great job of just eating it and holding on to it and living to uh, play another down. So two, even though it's a bad play, it's something you want to see out of a young quarterback because a lot of the times they'll try and make something happen and it will end up hurting the team worse. So. Loss of seven yards in that play. Second and 17, ball at the 49. Minute and 35 left in the final quarter. Clock is ticking. Airs it out. Deep left side. Incomplete. Really good spin on the ball by this young quarterback. Definitely need to tighten up some things, but showing a lot of promise uh, late in the game here and taking a shot deep to one of the receivers. So let's see what they do here in this third and long. Assuming since they've been throwing a lot with this new quarterback, they'll probably go after the air again. The last pass intended for Cornell County will stop the clock at a minute and 29 seconds in the final quarter, third and 17. Starting to see a lot of young guys on both sides of the ball here uh, tonight, so be looking for these faces in future years as well. Ivan takes it, hands it off, and he is brought down at least four or five yards back. Great job there by number eight here, Ashton LaBelle, finishing the tackle, and then 64, uh, Jake Powell, uh, one of the main keystones of the defense. So two really, really good athletes here. They actually both are wrestlers, so uh, good little team up there in that tackle for loss. A minute left in the final quarter, the clock is ticking. 21 for the Bears. Let's see what they do here. You'd have to you have to think maybe a pass, but at the same time they, they kind of just want to run out the clock, so. Blackman like takes it for a pass. Looking, looking, throws, incomplete. That pass was in time for number 11, Ruben Talley. And that will result in a turnover on downs with 26 seconds left to play in the final quarter. And that looks like that might be the virtual end of the game here. And another flag down. Uh, so we'll see what this entails here. It's backed by the quarterback, so possibly a roughing the passer. That's what it looks like they're trying to mark it off. So. Those are the mental mistakes that in a very close ball game, those are what are going to lose the game. So you do not want to see that from the Spartan defense. Uh, you have to stay composed and disciplined out there because if this was a, let's say, a 27-27 game with 26 seconds left, that could have killed them. So that will bring up an automatic first down. Ball at the 44-yard line with 26 seconds left. That pass almost in intercepted there. Intended for number 20, Isaiah Johnson. Brain Joseph, really good player here for Gordon, making a good break on the ball. And deflecting it out of bounds. Could have almost been an interception, but Brain Joseph, keep your eye on him from weeks to come. A really good athlete, good ball player. Second and 10, ball still at the 44. 20 seconds left to play in the final quarter. Blackman takes it, throws, complete. Great catch there by Ruben Talley. Once again, just showing the athleticism and ball skills that he, he possesses. Um, I think. The Golden Bears are kind of finding something here in the last few seconds of the game that maybe they want to look into from games to come that maybe want to work Ruben Talley out wide and, and put Blackman in the QB and work some more passing downs. Looks like that pass was actually incomplete. They'll bring up third and 10 with 14 seconds left to play.
see what the Golden Bears do here on this third down. Blackman takes it, drops back, airs it out deep. Looks like an interception for the Spartans there on that play. Great job high pulling the ball there by Anthony Hightower. Played the receiver really well inside uh, coverage and then going up and high pulling the ball. Here you see it again. Goes up at the highest point and takes the ball away from the receiver. And, and that's against Ruben Talley, who's an amazing athlete. So great job there by Anthony Hightower to get the ball back for the Spartans and to close out this game for them. Five seconds left here in the final quarter. This next play will be the end here. We'd also like to thank everyone in attendance for doing their part in making sure that these seniors, juniors, sophomores, freshmen have a season. Next week, the Spartans return home when they will take on the first Something there that Coach Roosh always makes the quarterback do is go tell the referee to that he's taking a knee so there's no confusion. So there it is. And that will be the end of the game. Final score, Spartans 27, East Golden Bears 7. The Spartans go to 1-1 one one on the season, whereas East goes 0-2. Spartans will be taking on Ursuline next week. We thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Guy Tepsik here with my colleague Michael Horo, and we'll see you next week.